Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you need to know about Eve Echoes. Today we're going to be looking at Capacitor. Now, if you've ever been around anyone who's played EVE Online for any length of time at all, you've probably heard the saying, Cap is life, and that's ultimately what we're going to discuss in this video. What is your capacitor? How does it work? How can you influence it? What are the different modules that affect it? What skills affect it? And what is capacitor warfare? Yeah, there's quite a lot of information to cover in this one, so I have put timestamps in the description down below that should help you navigate th through to the bits that you want to see most. Now, if you do enjoy this video or find it useful, let me know by hitting like on it, sub to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell so that you never miss an upload, and of course, let me know what topics you want to see me cover in future videos by commenting down below in the comment section. Finally, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining us on Patreon. Details are on screen now, and every pledge really helps. Anyway, so that all said and done, let's have a look at what your capacitor is. In EVE Echoes, your capacitor is essentially your ship's battery. It's the power source that runs and operates all of your different modules, whether those be things like micro warp drives and afterburners, shield boosters and armor repairers, weapon upgrades, or even things like laser and railgun turrets. If, a, if you look at a module, if I open up here the, uh, the laser turrets, and it has something here like an activation cost in gigajoules, that means it uses capacitor in order to operate. This is why the saying capacitor is life is so common, because if you have no capacitor, that means that none of those modules are going to work. You're going to have no propulsion, no tank, and no weaponry to speak of. You'll notice as well that when you uh, align your ship and warp away, that does use a certain amount of capacitor as well. Thus, if you have no capacitor at all, you are unable to warp. Now, in EVE Echoes, at the bottom of the screen here, you have your heads-up display, and this bar on the right-hand side, the golden and yellowy colour one, is your ship's capacitor. Ultimately, you'll notice here that if I activate some modules, this will use up part of my ship's capacitor. Same if I turn on the afterburner and the armour repairers here, that will drain my capacitor right the way down, and each activation cycle of these modules will also use a certain amount of capacitor. Obviously, depending on what the module is, depends on how much capacitor actually gets used. Now, how do you see how much capacitor your ship actually has? Now, of course, the easiest way to find out how much capacitor a ship has is to find it in the ship tree. In this case, if we go up to the Dragoon Assault that we're looking at here and scroll all the way down its info page to basic info, you can see here capacitors of 543 gigajoules. But that doesn't give us the full story, so let's go into details, into attributes and fittings, and then scroll down a little bit to where it says capacitors. Now that 543 gigajoules is the maximum fulfilled capacitor. That is when your capacitor is all the way at 100%, how many gigajoules it has to power various different things. Now if you look then below it, there is capacitor recharge time. If your capacitor is down to 0%, in this case it will take 205 seconds to recharge from 0 to 100. But, again, there's a bit more to it than that. As you can see here, maximum capacitor recharge rate of 6.62 gigajoules per second. Now, ultimately, capacitors do not re uh, recharge at a uniform rate from 0 to 100. A lot of research has been done on capacitors in EVE Online, and they have found that capacitors do recharge fastest at around the 25% mark. Now, I've been playing with capacitors a lot since EVE Echoes launched, and from my re uh, research so far, that this seems to be the case too. I've not done it quite as scientifically, but based on what I see, and based on that information that it recharges fastest at 25%, I have no reason to believe that that is different here in EVE Echo, so assume that your capacitor does recharge as that same non-linear function which I'm showing on screen now, that it recharges faster the closer you are to 25%, and so at 25%, your capacitor is recharging at 6.62 gigajoules per second. That means if all of the modules on your ship are working at no more than 6.62 gigajoules per second, you will never hit zero on your capacitor, because you'll hit that 25% mark, and then the uh, the outgoing capacitor will be as l will be lower than the recharge coming in, so your capacitor will never go below that. This also means that if someone is trying to hit you with something like an energy neutralizer, which we'll talk more about later, then it's easier. You'll, you'll notice a bigger effect at the higher percentages, but as you get close to the 25%, it's like the capacitor is fighting back more. It recharges faster close to that 25%, so it can take a bit of time to basically get over that 25% speed bump, but again, we'll cover that more in detail when we come to talk about capacitor warfare later on. 
Now this does mean that once your capacitor hits 25%, if you drop below, the further below 25% you go, the harder it is to recharge your capacitor. Thus you should try and disengage or at least get some form of capacitor recharge availability on your ship as soon as you hit 25%. At 25%, consider doing something about your capacitor, which may be disengaging from the fight. If you're actually piloting the ship in question, of course you can come to its fitting page and tap on capacitor on the right hand side for a more detailed and personal breakdown. In this case you can see that this particular Dragoon Assault, because I'm piloting it and I have skills that increase capacitor capacity, this particular Dragoon Assault has a capacitor capacity of 717 gigajoules. That's a lot higher than it normally would have. Ultimately that's, as I said, thanks to skills which we'll cover in just a moment. But it is worth noting that the recharge time remains at 200. 105 seconds. Even though the capacitor capacity has increased, the recharge time remains the same, which means the optimal recharge rate will have increased too, helping you maintain capacitor stability. Now, what does capacitor stability actually mean? What does it mean that it says stable here in the top right? In green writing, if we go back here, you can see capacitor stable. Well, that means under optimal situations, with everything running, the capacitor recharge rate is greater, or at least equal to, the capacitor draining rate. If all of your modules are chewing your capacitor, then you are recharging at equal to or faster, and thus your capacitor will remain stable. Obviously, that may only be stable at around the 25% mark. You may still see your capacitor to decrease, but as your capacitor does recharge faster, the closer to 25% it is, it means it may actually stabilize around the 25, 30 sort of percent mark there, depending on what your actual effective draining rate is. Basically, stable means there is a point in your ship's capacitor where the, the draining amount is equal to and less than the amount that your capacitor is recharging per second. Now, of course, that is then influenced by relevant skills, modules, and so on. So, talking about the different ways you can influence your ship's capacitor, let's have a look at skills. Yes, like everything else in Eve Echoes, if you want to be better at capacitor management, there is a skill for that. So we go into electronics, and here in the engineering subtree, you have things like frigate engineering, destroyer engineering, cruiser engineering, all the way down to industrial ship engineering. Now what these skills ultimately do, if we look here at frigate engineering, is they increase your frigate's power grid, the warp capacitor need gets reduced, but most importantly, or relevantly rather for this particular video, is that the frigate capacitor capacity is increased by 25%. You can see as you train this as well, capacitor capacity goes up by 5% per level, capping out at the 25% at level 5. Now, looking back at that Dragoon Assault and seeing that I had 717 gigajoules rather than the usual amount, that is courtesy of me having Destroyer Engineering trained up to level 4, an additional 20% Destroyer Capacitor capacity there, plus I've got Advanced Destroyer Engineering up to level 4 as well, which gives an additional 12%. So I'm actually getting 32% additional Capacitor capacity, hence the amount shown there at 717 gigajoules. That means if there's a particular type of ship that you like to fly, whether it's like me, frigates and destroyers, is, or whether you prefer uh, cruisers or battle cruisers, you can of course go to those different engineering skills and train into those to give yourself a better capacitor. As capacitor is life, these are always skills worth training for someone who is a, of a combat orientation. Simply put, it means you are more likely to be capacitor stable, meaning you are less likely to run out of juice in the middle of combat. Obviously running out of juice in the middle of combat is a very bad thing. Even if you're not using lasers or railguns, you're still not going to be able to use things like micro warp drives or, or afterburners, you're not going to be able to use your tanking modules, it's basically just going to shut your ship down, so you want to have that trained, maintain capacitor stability at all costs. Now that's not to say that you can't have a ship that is not capacitor stable, um, you just need to be aware of the fact that it's not capacitor stable and manually manage that to the best of your ability. Now, what, way to better man what better way to manually manage a capacitor than but to look at modules? Now there are of course a couple of different modules relevant to managing capacitor, but most notably of course is going to be capacitor batteries. These when fitted to ships give a natural capacitor increase, that's cold, you don't have to activate it, but of course you can activate it for an additional burst of capacitor power in the middle of combat as required. As you look at it here, you can see that this particular Acolyte small capacitor battery, which is a Meta Level 5 module, gives a natural capacitor increase of 156 gigajoules. I can then activate this to dump in an additional 250 gigajoules into that capacitor as required. 
Now that act has an activation time of 25 seconds. 25 seconds elapse, if I have not used that 250 gigajoules of additional capacitor, that will dissipate. Obviously if I have used it, then, well, nothing happens, I've used it, it's kind of too late to take it back at that point. The reactivation delay is then 60 seconds, that means once I've used this, there's 25 seconds of activation, followed by a 60 second delay before I can use it again. Now a couple of people have asked, so I am going to state explicitly, no, the reactivation time of a capacitor battery is not it recharging, it does not drain your capacitor to recharge a capacitor battery, they are completely separate entities. It's just a reactivation timer before you can do that additional capacitor dump again. And during that activation delay, yes, you do still get the cold capacitor increase of 156 gigajoules. Now, what would you actually use one of these for? Well, of course, there are certain ships that are not necessarily capacitor stable. You can use these to extend the life of your capacitor. If you start combat by activating one of these, you'll shoot to 250 gigajoules above your active capacitor. That will then slowly be used up and it will then go on cooldown. As soon as it comes off cooldown, you use it again to increase your capacitor and you start to go down from there. That ultimately just extends the life of your capacitor if you are not capacitor stable. It also means that if you are capacitor stable and someone comes along with an Osferatu or a neutralizer, you can use this to quickly boost yourself back up and thus make it harder for them to get over that 25% roadblock. Um, but also as well, you can use it just as an emergency situation of, oh dear, I've gone below 25%, I need to get my capacitor recharging again and just whack that in at a moment's notice. Lots of different uses there. And this is the best way for a ship that needs to have that kind of capacitor management. Obviously, it is a low slot, so fitting one of these is not the answer to every ship's problems, as fitting one of these does take a low slot away from tanking modules like shield boosters or armor repairers, it does take away sh uh, slots from propulsion modules like your micro warp drive or your afterburner, and of course it takes a slot away from even something like a weapon upgrade like a gyro stabilizer um, or a heat sink, that kind of thing. So it's not just get one of these and slap it into a ship. You do still need to consider whether or not you actually require one of these. And you'll see that with certain things like the Mala, um, I have often put a capacitor battery in there just to help maintain that stability and keep it alive longer. But what if it's not necessarily your ship that you want to help out with capacitor stability? Well, that's where remote capacitor transmitters come in. These are mainly found on logistics ships. You'll see things like uh, the Burst or the Bantam, the Osprey, the Scythe, that kind of thing, using these quite regularly. And I do have a video on using logistics ships that does mention these briefly in there as well. Basically, these are... <sighs> These are the capacitor equivalent of a remote armor repairer or a remote shield booster. They take capacitor out of your ship and they put it into the target ship. Very useful if the target ship needs a top up because it's being drained or if, like we've just mentioned, it's an active tank that's just happening to run a little bit lower on capacitor. You've got an activation cost here, you can see 37.1 gigajoules, transfers 31 gigajoules. This is different from EVE Online. In EVE Online, these are the other way around. You have the energy transfer amount is great greater than the activation cost, so it is a net gain and you can create chains. In EVE Echoes, currently that is not the case. You are losing capacitor faster than the other person is gaining it, so that is an important consideration if you're a logistics pilot using remote capacitor transmitters. Again, they do have an optimal range and an accuracy falloff, meaning they're transmitting 31 gigajoules at that 3.5 kilometers, but the closer you get to 5.25 uh, 5 beyond that, so that's what, 8.75 kilometers, the closer you get to 8.75 kilometers, you're slowly reducing down to about the 16, 17 gigajoules transfer, and then down to a 6% effectiveness once you're at two accuracy falloffs beyond optimal range, similar to using turrets. Going back to your own personal ship though, if you're looking to keep some capacitor added onto your own ship, we of course have Energy Nosferatus. We're going to cover these more in just a moment, talking about capacitor warfare, but I do just want to bring those up as something that yes, you can use to help manage your capacitor. They drain capacitor out of your opponent's ship and refill your own capacitor. Very short range here, you can see optimal range of 4 kilometers, accuracy fall off of 2 kilometers, meaning this particular module is only useful up to 8 kilometers. At 8 kilometers it's doing 6% of that transfer amount of 87 gigajoules. It's only getting that so 37 gigajoules. It's only getting that 37 gigajoules at the optimal range of four kilometers or lower. And it'll do that every four seconds. So every four seconds, you drain 37 gigajoules out of their ship and into yours. Very, very useful for helping you maintain capacitor stability if you're in combat range. 
Now it's worth noting that if we go back to the fitting page for the Dragoon Assault, that capacitor stability on the right hand side is predicated on the fact that we are within Nosferatu range. If we are not within Nosferatu range, which I can represent by unfitting the small energy Nosferatu, you'll see that actually our capacitor stability drops to 1 minute 3 seconds. This is where the fitting page can sometimes lie to you, because if you're going for a kiting build for example, or you're keeping at a longer range, and you have a Nosferatu fitted, just for helping you, like if you want to dive in, um, restore some energy and then move back out to range, it will tell you that you are capacitor stable, which you're not. You are only capacitor stable if all modules are running effectively, which includes the Nosferatu transferring a decent amount of capacitor in close combat. That does mean, obviously, in this case, that stability, as I said, only applies if you're within about the four to six kilometer range. If you're beyond that, this ship may not be capacitor stable, and that is, an in, uh, that is a consideration worth remembering. Beyond the modules, there are also rigs that you can use to help influence your capacitor as well. Now, these are engineering rigs, and they're found under, well, engineering rigs. Now, I'm showcasing this using the market because for some reason right now, these things are ludicrously expensive, and I don't necessarily have a whole ton of these to hand, so we're going to showcase it using the market. Now, there are two that I want to draw your attention to. First of all, of course, are the semiconductor memory cells. These apply a basic capacitor-capacity multiplier. In the case of a rank 1, that is a 17.5% increase to the capacitor capacity. Again, like we saw with the Dragoon Sniper, uh, Dragoon Assault, sorry, going up to 717 gigajoules thanks to my skills, this would increase that by a further 17.5%. Remember that that recharge time of 205 seconds would still apply. It would still be 205 seconds to go from 0 to whatever the new capacitor capacity would be, meaning a higher um, gigajoule per second recharge rate, meaning you are more likely to maintain capacitor stability using one of these. The second one to consider is a capacitor control circuit. These give a capacitor recharge time adjustment meaning uh, uh, of a negative amount, meaning that your capacitor does recharge that little bit faster. Again, this is the other side of that same coin that will help you maintain capacitor stability. You can either go for a bigger capacitor, which means more gigajoules per second, or you can go for a, a faster recharge time, which again means got more gigajoules per second. The difference here ultimately is that this one, the capacitor control circuit, is likely to be better if you are being actively uh, engaged in capacitor warfare because you're going to be fighting that across the board, whereas the semiconductor memory gives you more of a, if you're not capacitor stable, it allows you to hold on to what you're doing for longer. So they've kind of got swings and roundabouts to each of those. Again, notice that neither of these has a penalty. If you put two of these capacitor control circuit ones on, you are going to get uh, minus 12.5 percent recharge time adjustment from both of them. Same goes for the semiconductor memory cell. Adding two of these will be a total of 35% additional capacity capacitor multiplier. That is an important point here because a lot of rigs do have those combination penalties. These two do not. We've mentioned capacitor warfare a few times now throughout this video, so I think it's probably about time that we sat down and talked about what it actually means. Well, if you think of standard combat as your weapons trying to deplete your opponent's shield, armor, and uh, structure bars, then capacitor warfare is your mid-slots trying to drain out their capacitor. And there are two ways that you can do this. First and foremost are energy neutralizers, which I don't actually often see fitted to ships, which is a real shame. In PvP, these things are absolutely terrifying, but in PvE, I suppose they are absolutely useless, as we'll come to in a moment. Now, what an energy neutralizer does, if we look at this one here, looking at its stats, every 6 seconds, because that's its activation time, it will take 28.6 gigajoules out of my capacitor to activate, and it will hit their capacitor for 70 gigajoules of damage. That's kind of like firing a laser and hitting for 70, uh, 70 points of damage on the enemy's shields. The aim here is to try and reduce their capacitor down to zero, because a ship with no capacitor means it's not firing any laser turrets or any railgun turrets, it's not going to be able to activate any armor, armor hardeners, armor repairers, shield boosters, that kind of thing. It can't activate micro warp drives or afterburners, which will make it easier to hit. Ultimately, you are aiming to get their capacitor down to zero to switch off all of their active systems, which is an absolutely major advantage in combat because they can't heal, they can't do anything anymore, you've turned them into a floating rock, and if you're also warp disrupting them, well congratulations, they're not going to escape anytime soon. 
Now the reason that I mentioned that this is useless in PvE is because the NPC pirates in the game have infinite capacitor. It is impossible to get them down to zero capacitor. It's not going to happen, making neutralizers sadly pointless. And something I do hope changes um, in EVE Echoes. I know that's the case in EVE Online. I've proved it's the case here in EVE Echoes. I do hope it is something that does get changed because I'd like to see more ships actually getting benefits from energy neutralizers. It's also worth noting before we move on that 70 gigajoules worth of neutralization is based on being within the short optimal range of four kilometers. Obviously, if you go the full accuracy fall off of two kilometers out, so you're now at six kilometers, you'll actually only be neutralizing approximately 35 gigajoules. That then drops down to 6% again at an additional 2 kilometers out. So you do need to be really, say it with me, up close and personal for to be getting the most out of this. The same goes for the other type of capacitor warfare as well, which are small or large or medium energy Nosferatus. These are kind of... They're different to the neutralizers, whereas a neutralizer just hits for damage and that's it. These are often referred to as energy vampires because they leech it out of your opponent's capacitor into yours. You can see here that compared to the neutralizer, which does 70 gigajoules of damage per activation every 6 seconds, this will drain 37 gigajoules every, uh, every 4 seconds. So overall, it's less of a neutralization amount, but it also helps charge your own capacitor. Now there is an additional effect that is worth mentioning here, and I want to give a huge shout out to John Executor, uh, Executor, sorry, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, John Executor, who helped me earlier on actually testing this one. Ultimately, in EVE Online, it, you can only drain the, uh, the capacitor of someone whose capacitor tank is larger than yours. So if you have a 500 gigajoule capacitor and your opponent's ship only has a 230 gigajoule capacitor, the Nosferatu will not work. It used to be the case in EVE Echoes that it was based on percentage. If you had a higher percentage capacitor than your opponent's target, the, uh, the Nosferatu wouldn't work. You needed to have a smaller percentage of capacitor. Now, I did a little bit of testing today with John Executor and for, uh, proved, conclusively proved, that it is the old way of uh, doing it that EVE Echoes opts for. That is to say, me in a 500, well, 717 gigajoule capacitor uh, Dragoon Assault was able to drain the capacitor of a uh, much, slower, uh, much smaller, I think it's 230 gigajoules Condor 2. And that continued until his capacitor hit 56% and mine hit 55%, at which point additional activations of the Energy Nosferatu did not drain his capacitor further, nor did it influence mine at all. It's worth noting this is different now then to EVE Online. Energy Nosferatus will only drain from a total, from a, a percentage bigger than theirs. If your ship is at 20%, you can drain from anyone who is 21% capacitor or higher. If your ship is at 100%, an Energy Nosferatu does nothing. That is important to note um, and something I'm actually really quite excited to finally actually have worked out and be able to conclusively prove. And there we have it, everything that you need to know about your ship's capacitor. What it is, how it works, how to influence it with modules, rigs and skills, and what capacitor warfare is. And I do hope I've inspired some of you of budding PvP pirates out there to get in there, start adding energy neutralizers to your ship, and seeing how you get on with those. Obviously, energy Nosferatus are a very popular fit for uh, brawling builds because they allow you to help maintain your tank and your capacitor whilst you're, say it with me, up close and personal. I am genuinely looking into getting some t-shirts done for that, so do stay tuned. Anyway, that's Capacitor. Let me know what topics you want me to cover in future videos by commenting down below, and find me on Twitter, where you can take some really cool screenshots, post them to Twitter, using the hashtag CSKL. I love to see your ships, love to hear what you guys are getting up to in EVE, and um, certainly let me know what's going on for you folks. Anyway, thanks for watching right to the end, hope that's helped clear up some issues you have, and happy sailing, see you in New Eden!